You may ask yourself, are we doing this again? Well, yes, we do this every week. Hello and welcome to Fido Live number 97. It's Sunday, so you're here, I'm here. What the hell? Let's be here together. All right, we still are without the chief cartoonist, and yes, it has become lonely here at the Covid Hill Studios of Fighter of the um, comic strip. Your cartoonist is going feral. Uh, good, thank goodness for Chef Boyardee. That way, I don't have to cook anymore. <laughs> All right, here is Monday. Uh, we brought back Catherine, the crazy cat lady. Uh, there's Bogash, and here's Felicia, and she says. Uh, I've been concerned about Felicia being up here all alone, so I brought her this. A plate of food. It's probably been a long time since she's had anything good. Uh, how kind of you. What is it? Felicia's not responding well. It's a holistic, meat-free, non-GMO cat snack, specially formulated, mindfully, for cats. And she just unceremoniously dumps it on the floor. Isn't that cute? All cats play with their food. And Fido's got the trash can, dustbin in a room. Yeah, we're playing garbage men. Oh, let's get an eraser here. I would normally be saying, well, let's erase this and give this to the chief colorist so that she can color it. But nope, nothing of that sort. Uh, this is just about all done, I guess. All right, there is Monday, up there on the magnets. Here is Tuesday. Probably should zoom in here so you can see what's going on, but it's uh, Fido outside, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cats. And he goes inside the hallway, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cats. Tries to climb the stairs, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cats. Oops, I forgot to do a line here on the stairs. Never you real cartoonists don't use markers. This is all done with paintbrush. <laughs> yeah. All right. And um, he finally gets inside and presses his back up against the door as he closes it. I'm concerned the cats might be a tad overrepresented around here. Yes, yeah, put that one up on the magnet. That's all done. Here is the Wednesday. The cats from downstairs have busted in, and since it's black and white and not color, we really can't tell which, that these are anything different from Felicia. But there's uh, Bo, Fido back there, Dino, and Felicia. They're trying to have dinner. Cats bust in. Food inspection! And they're on the table taking the food. This is okay. I'll have to examine this. I'm taking food down here. And they're off. And Felicia has to explain. She doesn't feed them fish downstairs. Which the cat pops back in. Got any dessert? Oh, there is the Wednesday. It's a matter of uh, erasing it and sending it off to be filmed and never seen again. Yeah, this one's extra special dirty because um, when you draw things, it's like layer upon layer upon layer. So half the things are erased. Uh, you can barely see Fido here, but I had to draw the entire Fido character. And all you got is the tip of Fido's nose and that little spot of the chair. <laughs> oh, well. Let's put Wednesday aside up on the magnets and we'll go to Thursday, which is also complete. Uh, Felicia and Bo. This has become a cat strip, isn't it? Hasn't it? Felicia, while munching on a bit of the plant, says, Unlike dogs... Cats have a sense of pride and self-importance that is characteristic of, their, of our nature. We recognize our humans, but, unlike dogs, we don't respond immediately when called. Cats prefer to show affection when we want. If we're not seeking attention and you call, we will not come. And you may pat me now. When a cat like presents its butt to you, I understand that's to be considered the uh, a compliment. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we'll go back and uh, erase this better later on. You guys don't want to sit around and watch me erase, do you? Okay, here is potential Friday. Yeah. Here's the original Friday I planned on doing. Usually they spend Fridays in the bar, but really they're in the restaurant. We'll 
So we'll be inking this one today. So uh, this is the old Friday. It'll probably end up. To, uh, probably go into next into Monday for next week. Um, we have Dino, Bo, Fido, Felicia, and a waitress. And the waitress, everyone's already finished eating, but Dino hasn't. And the waitress says, "Everything okay?" Um, no, this tastes horrible. I'm sorry. Would you like me to take that back to the chef and get him to fix it? Well, that depends. How does his spit taste? So instead of using that one on Friday, okay, I'll erase that here. We'll send this to uh, right there, Monday the twenty seventh. So five twenty seven. And this is the one we're going to use for Friday. Now you can't see it. Let's see, uh, five twenty five. You can't see it because it's just a light pencil. You know, I have to go back in with a darker pencil just to uh, make the lines happier. But um, I'll read this to you. Yeah, you can't see it. Then looking at the camera. All right, we have Fido, Dino, Bo, Felicia. They're in the bar, and um, Dino says, "I just don't care." And Bo says, "Well, you should." And Felicia says, "Come on, give it a try." And, you know, uh, whenever I take a position, I regret it. Be vague. You'll be fine. <sighs> okay. I am so sick and tired of the current situation. We need to fire whoever is in charge because they're not watching out for the people. How's that? Vague enough? Felicia pops up. What do you mean by people? We uh, have, and, and we have a Saturday. Um, I guess Catherine, the crazy cat lady from downstairs, is, has come up for a cup of coffee, and is Dino trying to pick her up and Bo. And Felicia is just running wild through the house. And Fido says, "What's with her?" And Catherine explains, "Cats are furry balls of energy, and they need to let out. Let, they need to let it out since hunting isn't an option." And Bo suggests, why don't you play with her? Uh, help her release all that energy. Fido says, oh, all right. And drags her over to the uh, TV where they're trying to play a video game. And Felicia is still going crazy. And Fido says, this isn't working. And play with her. Video game. <laughs> um, I had to bring Catherine in on this one because um, saying hunting isn't an option sounds like something she would say. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've reached a point where there are just things... To Certain characters w would not say, so I have to bring other ones in to cover for it. Oh, uh, um, let's go. Mm, I guess we'll do the we'll do the lettering on this. Set it aside to dry. Then we can do the inking on you know, one of the other ones. All right. Now, as you know, uh, uh, let's choose our brush. Yeah. yeah. That's not going to be uh, difficult this week. I've already chosen a brush. Um, cartoonists are the dirtiest, filthiest creatures on the face of the planet, so I must wear a glove while I'm working so that I do not uh, smear any of my filth onto the beautifully clean page. And also, um, if I were to touch the pencil marks, I might smudge or smear them, making my life all the more difficult. So I usually like to put down a piece of paper. And I assure you, this is not um, an excuse to do a bit. So, golfer Scotty Schaefer got his ass arrested yesterday. Uh, around six in the morning, well, say around five in the morning, um, someone got uh, run over by one of the tour buses. So the police had the entire street around the pro golf um, course closed down. And Scotty Schaefer pulls a, do you know who I am? And just flashes his ID and tries to drive through the poli police to... You know, to get, he's got 10 o'clock tea time at 6 in the morning. He wants to get up there and you know, do a little early practice. Well, um, in what I can only assume, uh, the cops were using, a, the cops had been trained by William Shatner's T.J. Hooker. If anyone remembers this old TV show, uh, he would hop on the hood of a car of a fleeing criminal. And they even parodied, even did a parody of it on Saturday Night Live, where, um, They had the characters. Uh, TJ, d did you manage to jump on the hood of the car? <laughs> so, um, 
he's arrested for um, assaulting a police officer when actually the police just jumped on his car, so whatever. But he was able to make his um, 10 o'clock tea time. He released him by about 9. And uh, he came in second place that day. And I think he was in first place today. Uh, I usually don't speak of golf because I really haven't followed golf since Tiger Woods. And Tiger did not um, pass the... Uh, do not make it. Do not make the cut. And Tiger is looking horrible. Look at him. He's all, he's all puffy. And he's got this uh, salt and pepper beard. And he looks like he's gained about 50 pounds. And, but he still has his Tiger logo. That's nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tiger Wood admitted that improvements are needed in all areas of his gaming. No kidding. Uh, okay, well, um, just, um, you know, I'm sure that if Tiger Woods drove through this police thing, cops wouldn't have hopped on his hood like that. <laughs> Scotty Schaefer just got in trouble <laughs> because he's not Tiger Woods. <laughs> uh, oh, we got a text message from the uh, from the chief colorist. Um, let's ask her if she wants to be on the show. This would be the uh, third or fourth week when we've been without her. All uh, right. Um, sexiest man in the UK, two years in a running, uh, Jeremy Geezer Clarkson. And we saw, I saw the, uh, his Clarkson's Farm TV show, a lot of fun. They, they do a typical Top Gear-like, uh, uh, competition where, uh, between, uh, the guy who runs his farm and himself to see who can make more money. And, um, I don't know how farmers survive, uh, he, his crop more or less failed, and the kids still beat Jeremy. But my God, I think they barely made sixty thousand dollars for a year of backbreaking work, and all that money had to go to pay for um, the seed and fertilizer for next year because all the prices have gone up. Oh yeah. Besides all the bullshit he's got to go through with the uh, with the government, uh, uh, poor Mr. Clarkson. <laughs> If, if he wasn't um, if he wasn't independently wealthy, they would not have farmed that crop this year. They wouldn't be farming at all in the UK. Um, yeah, well, hey, let's uh, let's just say hi to the chief colorist. What the hell? We have a, we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to have the chief colorist on the show. Oh, let's put the speaker on so you guys can hear her. Hello! Uh, you are live on Fido, the comic strip. Are you not reading my text? No, of course I'm not reading your text, but don't say it. <laughs> hey, I'm desperate to get you on the show. Tell everyone you'll be back soon. I will be back soon. I hope to be back soon. But did you read my text, honestly? Uh, vaguely. Well, okay, well, thank you for joining us. I guess we'll hang up on you now. Thank you. Goodbye. You. Goodbye. <laughs> I can't read the text while I'm, while I'm on the air. <laughs> okay, uh, doc, the new Doctor Who, Shooty Gatwa. The joke being his twin brother, Stabby, is uh, running around Piccadilly uh, attacking tourists. Um, time man of the year, I suppose. Um, he's, yeah, he's... Uh, all right, um, Gat Mr. Gatwa, tone it down a bit. Uh, I I know gay people. They don't act like that. They're not all these mincing twats. Please, tone it down a bit. 73.8% uh, of his audience tuned out during the show at all different points. So usually they use the time of tune-out to, to try to figure out what's wrong with the show, but it's like a constant tune up all over so I guess the, the entire show is what's wrong with the show uh, second episode he brings in um, drag queen Jinx Morrison to play like Bette Midler character and uh, it, it was like to try and out gay each other <laughs> uh, Russell T Davies you're um, you're abusing your power uh, feel bad for Doctor Who hopefully someday it will be a good show again 
And speaking of good shows, uh, apparently X-Men 94, 93, 94, whatever they call it, turned out it was a good show. We still don't know why they fired showrunner Bo DeMeo. But uh, this thing's on Disney+, Plus, so no one's watching it. Uh, people really aren't watching it because they don't like Disney as a corporation. But um, maybe someday this will be someplace where we'll be able to watch it. Uh, once Disney smartens up and gets rid of Disney+. Plus. And on the good news, we get to have our new favorite little lady, Sydney Sweeney. Back on the page here. Uh, Sydney is going to play Barbarella. Now, I remember Barbarella, the old um, movie with um, Jane Fonda, and it sucked. But they're not going to do a remake. It's just another movie in the Barbarella universe. So, um, okay, as long as Sydney shows her Sweeney's, it, uh, it should be enter entertaining. So, uh, I don't know, what is this supposed to be? <laughs> Looks like she didn't wash her hair for this episode. All right, let's put Sydney Sweeney aside. And um, what I wanted to say about uh, Star Trek Discovery is, you ever notice that every season, you know, they never ended a season thinking that, that they did a good a, a good job. Every year, the showrunners say that they're going to fix things, and and when the next year came around, they were like unwilling to or just uncap incapable of, of, of fixing it. And, this show went on for 65 episodes, five seasons. I, amazing. And, and good Star Trek can never last that long, but bad Star Trek can. Good riddance, Star Trek. Um, and on a, def, on a separate note, let's, uh, let's bring up our uh, Disney plate here. Any, everyone may or may not remember that... Uh, Agatha was a character, a side character created in uh, WandaVision. And back in 2021, um, they were going to give her her own show called The House of Harkness. Then they changed their mind, and in 2022, it was called The Covenant of Chaos. And then they rewrote it and changed their mind again, and now it's, and then it was called Agatha The Dark Hole Diaries. And then, well, they changed their mind again, or rewrote it again, and uh, now it's Agatha All Along. So I guess the name of a song that they have, Agatha All Along. Whatever. And briefly, they flashed out Agatha, the lying witch with the great wardrobe. <laughs> and then Marvel took this down. This actually up did appear on their um <laughs> on their website, but I guess it was an internal joke, I don't know. <laughs> and finally, last and certainly least, we have uh the Carrington event that all these space weathermen have been crying about all week. And solar lights as far as south as Florida. Uh, the strongest solar storm in 20 years did little damage, but worse space weather is coming. Well, of course, yes, yes, yes. Years of careful planning helped safeguard against last week's severe space weather, but we don't know how we'd cope with a monster event. For years, we've been warned about the impending doom from the sun. If pointed in our direction, powerful eruptions of radiation and plasma from our star can strike our planet to supercharge the Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field, effectively hitting a global reset button on all of our modern technology. A sufficiently intense bombardment could, could raise a geomagnetic storm that would push satellites out of orbit, short out our submarine cables that stusher together the Internet, and plunge the world into a darkness of massive blackouts and uncollapsed power grids. Yet this past weekend, when one of the strongest solar outbursts in 20 years blasted our planet, we managed to emerge unscathed thanks to years of careful public and private planning. Good us. The storm has ebbed, although the solar region that sparked it has since spat out additional monstrous flares. Fortunately, no longer targeted on Earth because of the sun's spin. But while we've passed our biggest test yet, experts say now is not the time to let down our guard. The question of more cataclysmic solar activity isn't a matter of if, but when. <sighs> the sky is falling. Yeah, we get this about everything. 
I just want to draw a comic strip. So, hey, why don't we do that? Uh, everyone at home, take out your ink. Now, remember, you always put your cap back on your ink bottle because it would be a, a horrible thing if your ink were to spill. And I'm going to have Irving up here on camera one zoom in a little bit closer down here so you can see what we're doing. Uh, fantastic camera work on that Irving. Let's, uh, hmm. We're going to pull Sydney Sweeney out here. What the hell? It's always nice to have a pretty woman while we're working. Yep. Uh, let's, can we get, oh, we're really low on this ink, aren't we? Well, I did say last week that I'd show you the fascinating process that it, that is refilling the ink bottle. See, it comes with a stopper. And look, isn't that, isn't that fascinating? <laughs> yeah, I'm, everyone on Patreon, I'm running low on ink. Yeah, that will be our next big purchase. Uh, anyone who's curious, we use uh, Noodler's brand Heart of Darkness. Now, always look for Cthulhu on your ink as a sign of quality. Say it's going to be a quicker way to fill an ink bottle. All right, I splurted ink on this uh, right there, there, just almost on the page there. So let's get. Uh, Let's get Miss Sweeney off the bit, off the board. She's done her she's on her job. And uh, what are we going to next? <laughs> oh well. I'm gonna spill ink on anyone? Let's spill ink on Shooty Gatwa. <laughs> Once again remember to put the cap back on your ink ball. <clears throat> Well, hey there, Shooty. Well, yeah, help us out here while we uh, while we ink. I believe Shooty is from Nigeria, like all like all good British Doctor Who's are. I mean, he's this big muscular guy, and you would think he'd play into that. No. He's a, he's a real man's man, Mr. Gatwa. <clears throat> so this is the famous Fido font. You might notice I have it slanted 22 and a half degrees in that direction. So Doctor Who used to be a British production after the fall of the BBC. It's it, uh, this particular show has been taken over by of all people Disney. <laughs> and I have to ask who is surprised <laughs> by the current state of um, of Doctor Who when they know it's been taken over by Disney. This is a this is a kids show and of course you know Disney is known for their children's programming. So of course you know on a kids show it's it's good to have um, grooming as it were. You know, to groom these young 
children to grow up to be fine, outstanding adults. And Disney has been uh, grooming children for a, a long time. Uh, for those who don't get the joke, grooming is a term uh, where uh, adults do n things to children to turn them into bad adults. <clears throat> so in uh, the first episode of these things, it's, it's, you know, it's space babies and you know it's called Space Babies because he says it at least a dozen times. There are guys on, there are people on YouTube who are going to buy a boat <laughs> because of this show. <laughs> gives them a, this gives their channel enough content to go on another couple of years uh, but we're just here to draw a comic strip we're not really here to lament the loss of Doctor Who a TV show that I barely started watching I, I saw David Tennant and I like Matt Smith writing's always been hit or miss on the show But I said this earlier about David with um, with Good Omens. Looks like he's uh, he's really trying to make it up to the uh, LGBTQ alphabet com uh, community. Let's see. Good Omens too. They really strayed from the original Terry Pratchett. <laughs> a little, well, a little bit. They strayed from the original Terry Pratchett. I guess Im immortal angels can be gay men. I, I, all right. I don't care. <laughs> I just miss the days when we did not have to know all that. <laughs> you know, Rock Hudson was gay. Who cares? I guess if uh, old Rock was around today, uh, he'd... You'd have to proudly tell us all about it. And I don't know if any of you have seen the Chief Colorist, but you don't want to know what I do in my bedroom. I don't want to know what they do in their bedroom. It's none of my business. Yeah. But I just want to draw a comic strip. I don't want to get on the wrong side of the alphabet community. Who, for some stupid stupid reason want to have this battle with the straight community. <clears throat> yeah, it's okay. We've had shooty here too long. <laughs> let's, let's find something that's easier on the eyes. Yeah. Hey, Sydney, how you doing? Oh, you can't see Sydney, can you? There you go. Now you're on camera. See, as uh, Dino is doing in this particular comic strip, we we really don't want to take a position on anything because we don't care. <laughs> This, uh, this movie, Barbarella, that Sydney Sweeney's going to do, is it going to be any good? I doubt it. She, she hasn't made a good movie yet. But does her career really require good movies? <laughs> we, are, we are post good movie now. Uh, I don't expect anything coming out of Hollywood to be any good anymore.
be vague. Probably a good, um, I'm going to put a period there. Probably some very good advice. I'm just a cartoonist. I'm just drawing a comic strip. No one cares what I really think. So I'm not going to tell you what I really think most of the time. <clears throat> Probably advice that Hollywood could take. <clears throat> Do you think Shuji Gatwa and Doctor Who would be uh, more successful if we knew everything they thought about every little f fart, political and non-political in the universe, or if they instead just were vague and, you know, <laughs> and just got on with the with the show? I don't know. It's just a just a suggestion there, Mr. Davies. Looks like the camera's going a little bit awry. Let's see if we can straighten things up a bit. That's nice. Yeah, I remember Barbarella. It wasn't a very good movie. And uh, this was even before the times when Jane Fonda became uh, as insufferable as she later became. Hanoi told uh, Hanoi Jane told us a little bit too much about what she thought, and we just wanted her to be on the screen and show off her Sweeney's. You're just a bubble brain actress. You're not here to change the world. We could probably blame someone like John Lennon for the. Yeah. Or doing crap like that, or trying to do crap like that. But it, it was the age. Wow. Do I have a, okay. There's a lot of um, text here. And I'm running out of space already. I should have enough room to put Tarot in here. And still have the proper spacing. <coughs> that worked out. Uh, usually, you don't want to put this much dialogue in a comic strip, but um, since it's all just they're, they're blurted out. It's not really important that anyone actually reads these words for the joke to work. Just take it as a series of haggard platitudes. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, it used to be the job of cartoonists to do more or less what the actors and, uh, and, and people of Hollywood have decided to do, make social commentary and such. But uh, no, even we don't want to do it anymore. You'll have no political commentary here at Fight of the Comic Strip. We officially have no stance on an any <laughs> on anything we just want to draw a comic strip I will uh, recommend uh, certain things to certain companies <laughs> as I have in the past 
but get out of here, Disney. Let's look at Sydney Sweeney again. <clears throat> Wow, this is this doing this dialogue here is nerve wracking. You know, constantly afraid I'm going to run out of room. I've still got to make it legible. I want to put as much space in between every word, not run anything together too close. that word too big. But fortunately I have a little bit of space here. And just on the end there. I'm gonna have to take a break just after doing this lettering. This is, this is nerve wracking. It's a rainy night here at the Cobbett Hill Studios of Fire the Comic Strip. So to uh, recap what's going on, uh, the chief colorist is uh, still in, in rehab learning how to walk after a series of operations she's had to undergo to replace old hip implants. And they, um, when they were in there, it looks like they nicked an artery and they gave her an infection. So there are all sorts of things going on. Yeah, I'm really off in this. But I can put the word the down here. That's, uh, not watching out for, and we'll put a lot of people. And I'm glad I'm done with that panel. Looks like I'm going to have to move Bo's head as he's getting into the text. Won't work there. You can just see. I get one, two, three little ink blots right down there. How's that? Vague enough? That's pr this is probably a good title for today's show. How's that? Vague enough?
I kind of um, am finding it very humorous that the um, they can't tell space weather any better than they can tell Earth weather. <laughs> All week I've been listening to these assholes talking about uh, how uh, oh Armageddon is coming. It's a Carrington event. Oh no, we're going to lose our power grid. Everyone should stock up on canned foods and firearms. Uh, you gotta hate the media. Okay, let's get the signature in there. Very important. And I'm going to pull the camera out a little bit so that we can get a good look at the board. And this goes up on the magnets to dry. And I guess we will call that. We'll call this. How's that vague enough? That's the title of today's episode. I'm, uh... <laughs> Worst space weather is coming! Uh, really? Could you tell me what the temperature in Boston is going to be on the you know, terrestrial weather uh, to, uh, next week? Uh, I figure that'd be an easier thing for you to forecast than what the sun is going to do. They they have no fear whatsoever to forecast. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five. The worst. I, 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 yeah. Sometimes you, you almost wish there was government censorship just to top, stop these people from fear mongering. <laughs> if it makes a good story, they'll run it. If it, if it bleeds, it leads. <clears throat> Let's see how we're doing on time. We are what, 45 minutes in. Guess the show isn't a uh, the show isn't as entertaining this week as it has been weeks past. It's kind of difficult to sit here in a lonely studio and talk to yourself. But drink your coffee if you got them. <clears throat> Uh, what's going on? Oh, that's the end of the shirt right there. Okay.
So I'm a little bit concerned about this uh, Lord of the Rings Gollum film, directed by uh, directed and starring Andy Serkis, and we're going to have uh, Peter Jackson working in there. Um, they don't have a story, <laughs> and there is no reason to, to to tell the story that looks like they're going to try to tell. I do not believe they're going to make a lot of money, so they better not spend a lot. But telling Hollywood not to spend a lot of money is usually a, a waste of breath. There was a video game featuring Gollum out a while ago. And the uh, funny part is uh, they called it Lord of Ring Gollum. Not Lord of the Rings, but Lord of Ring. <laughs> yeah, they threw that thing together so fast they didn't, couldn't even get the name right. <laughs> All right, let's see. Catherine, Catherine the Crazy Cat Lady. One of the first times I've drawn her without a cat in her hair. I usually would have a cat in her hair, but I just didn't want to make things complicated in, in the storyline here. If there were more cats, they could play with Felicia, or why wouldn't they be going crazy or whatever. And this joke here, it's like, well, Fido, why don't you, you know, help her burn off some of that energy? As if Fido's going to run around the apartment with her. I, I had to pull an audible, really, just to pull in Catherine in here at all. Uh, the original joke is just going to be either Bo or Dino saying these lines that Catherine says. It just didn't fit the characters. And um, a lot of this is just like quotes from um, actual internet articles I read. You know, cats are furry balls of energy and they need to let it out since hunting is not an option. <sighs> I think that's a near rip-off pull quote from uh, an article about, you know, why do your cats behave like they be like they behave. Have some coffee. We have one of those machines where you could um, uh, uh, heat up the milk and fluff it up, make it all foamy. But it's like, since I, I'm, I'm, I'm living home alone here, I do not want to have to clean the kitchen. Well, I obviously don't want to have to clean up the, the, the milk uh, frother on the coffee machine. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not cooking, I'm not frothing my coffee, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I'm going feral. left knee is hurting me. I might have to cut this short just so I can stretch my knee out. But um, you get the general idea how a comic strip is made, right? Just have to invest in the right tools. These are, these are the famous Himalayan tree squirrel pubic hair paintbrushes. But you 
can't get it just about anywhere. I have them uh, imported at great expense from the Himalayas, where a team of Sherpas is constantly on duty hunting the squirrels. Do you get the special hair for these fine, fine paintbrushes? That's just the sort of expense we don't spare here at Fido the Comic Strip to bring you the finest and, and dog cat related humor. <laughs> Um, farewell to Kathy Guswall, who draws the comic strip Kathy. She's retired. And rather than uh, have her strip go on like a zombie years after her, she's uh, decided to stop the comic strip, leaving just a little bit more space on the comics pages for the next generation. Uh, job well done, Kathy. Hope you enjoy your retirement. I'm always of the opinion that if you do not like what you do, stop doing it. And I guess Kathy did not like what she was doing. I can't ever see myself retiring from uh, drawing a comic strip. I might stop drawing this one, but I'll always try to draw a comic strip. Something I've always wanted to do my entire life. And I'm so happy to have the opportunity to do it now. See, I didn't like uh, doing carpentry work and roofing and banging nails with a hammer <laughs> so I stopped doing it now my uh, plan is just to do whatever I can do to make me happy One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, never draw your characters that small. <clears throat> And let's bring back Sydney Sweeney. Where are you, Sydney? Ah, oh, there you are. This one should be dry enough yet. I always try to have a pretty woman on the page, even though it looks like her hair needs washing. N E E D S. <laughs> Get this hair out of my eye. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think Sydney forgot to wear her shirt in this photo. Um, can someone um, can someone check on that for me? Um, I, I... I do not know if Sidney Sweeney will ever one day make a successful movie, 
But I'm pretty damn well sure uh, Barbarella's not going to be one of them. But good on you, Sydney. Very few actresses can uh, actually... Uh, well, very few actresses' career can uh, survive a hit like a movie uh, like Madame Webb uh, did to them. That a movie like Madame Webb... Very few actresses can survive a hit that a movie like Ma Madame Webb did to her. That would actually be kind of funny if her entire career is just her uh, lunging from bad, lurching from bad movie to bad movie, uh, Hollywood stinker to Hollywood stinker, and just no effect on her career. All she has to do is smile and, and have large breasts, and she's good. <laughs> her superpower, as it were. But enjoy it now, Sydney. Those things aren't going to remain perky forever. Why am I doing all these hash marks with a brush? Uh. <laughs> Not sure I like uh, Felicia's position here on this one. I just wanted to have her running around and running amok, but hmm. might have to redraw that. Let's think about that a bit while we're finishing up the inking here. Okay, we're we're gonna cut t today short, only an hour today, because I've got work to do on the characters. Everyone, draw your comic strip at home. Be sure to put the ink back on your bottle, because uh, that's an important safety tip from Fight of the Comic Strip. Uh, thank you for joining Sydney Sweeney and us for today's uh, episode of Fido, uh, Mr. Gatwa. You. you probably should go for acting lessons because uh, you just seem to be playing Shooty Gatwa, not Doctor Who. And uh, this is, uh, how's that? Vague enough? Fido Live number 97. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.